JankyMind.com brings you the book summary of The Inner Work, An Invitation to True Freedom and Lasting Happiness by Matthew Micheletti and Ashley Cottrell, written and narrated by Janky Mind. Introduction Looking to tap into your full potential and find inner peace, The Inner Work is your go-to guide for personal transformation. It's a mix of spiritual wisdom and psychology, taking you through the steps to overcome pain and find calm within. Ever feel like you're not quite reaching your true potential, held back by doubts or fears? This book is here to help you break through those barriers and really shine. Dive into this summary and you'll learn how to shake off the mental chains that keep you from happiness. It's all about changing those negative thought patterns, beliefs, and knee-jerk reactions that bring you down. Plus, you'll get to the heart of what makes you you and heal from the inside out. Ready to stop selling yourself short and embrace tranquility? This summary could be just the spark you need to ignite your journey to a better you. Chapter 1. Inner peace and boundless love await you. Embarking on a journey of self-discovery is like setting off on the greatest adventure of your life. It's a quest to find the real you the one that exists beyond all the masks we wear. Sure, it's not always a walk in the park. There will be bumps and hurdles along the way. But guess what? You've got a map in your hands, ready to navigate you through. First things first, believe that you're worthy of the peace, joy, and purpose you're after. Forget about living up to someone else's idea of success. You're the boss of your own happiness. So why not aim for the stars? Give yourself the green light to dream big. Here's a little secret. The way we think shapes our world. Our beliefs and viewpoints color everything we experience. Those repeating problems. They're just reflections of our inner world. To change our outer world, we need to start from within. We often look for happiness in other people, our jobs, or the stuff we own. Sometimes, we even push away good things because we're scared they won't last. But chasing after more or backing away out of fear just keeps us running in circles. True fulfillment isn't out there. It's nestled right inside us. That's what inner work is all about. Finding freedom by freeing your mind. Once you realize you don't need anything extra to be happy, you'll see that joy has been your sidekick all along. It's not about getting to a happy place. It's about realizing you're already there. Inner work is about clearing away the fog that hides the peace that's always been there. So, start believing in your right to love, happiness, and completeness. Your potential is as vast as the sky. Only your viewpoint can limit it. To unlock all that you can be, view your life with eyes full of love and acceptance. Try using affirmations to kickstart this process. Say, I am already worthy, or I am content with my life, out loud and feel the response within you. Does it ring true, or does something hold you back? Facing this resistance is the key to breaking it down. Keep reminding yourself that you're entitled to happiness. When you catch yourself shying away from joy, take a moment to explore that feeling. Understand where it's coming from, and gently let it go. Turn your inner voice into your cheerleader, not your critic. When it starts to grumble with jealousy, frustration, or regret, remember that it's this inner chatter, not the world around you. That's the real buzz skill. You have the power to choose serenity over chaos. Chapter 2. Think it, don't be it. Imagine your thoughts as a bunch of chatty birds perched in your mind. They're not really you, just visitors passing through. If you start thinking they're part of you, they'll start bossing you around. Anxiety thoughts. They can make you panic. Thoughts filled with shame or regret. They can drag you down into the dumps. That's the power they have if you forget they're just thoughts. Here's a trick. Treat your mind like a tool, not a foe. It's got some old habits trying to keep you safe, but some are way past their sell-by date. Watch your thoughts like clouds drifting by, and they lose their grip on you. Keep an eye on those gloomy thought loops. Track them back, and you'll spot your consciousness theme. It's like a pair of glasses you've been wearing since you were little, coloring everything you see. 
This theme comes from stuff like your family, your culture, and big things that happen to you. It's like a map in your head, telling you how to read the world. And yep, it can lead to some not-so-great choices and rocky relationships. Funny thing is, even when you try to go against what you've learned, it can end up sticking even more. But hey, deep down, the real you is still there, under all that old programming. Inner work is about peeling off those layers to find the true you. Our brains are pretty good at sticking to old habits, making those consciousness themes stick. Keep thinking about what you don't have, and it gets etched in your brain. But the good news? You can change the tune. Start thinking about all the good stuff. Thankfulness, hope, plenty, and you can rewire your brain for a happier theme. There's this cool story about a grandpa and his grandson. The grandpa says there's a fight going on inside him between two wolves. One's all about darkness and trouble, the other's about light and peace. The kid asks which wolf wins, and the grandpa says, the one you feed. So, waking up to the real you means spotting those old thought patterns and breaking free. Watch the themes and feelings your mind likes to visit. With a little kindness to yourself, you can start giving more snacks to the peace-loving wolf. Chapter 3. Surfing New Mental Waves Picture your mind as a vast sea, each thought a ripple on the water's surface, or imagine it's a radio, dialed into your usual stations of worry and doubt. But here's a secret. You can spin that dial and find new frequencies of thought. Wondering how to switch up your mental playlist? Take a cue from Viktor Frankl, who survived the Holocaust. He taught us that there's a gap between what happens to us and how we respond. That gap is where you have the power to choose a fresh reaction, changing your mental tune. When you step back and watch your thoughts without getting caught up in them, you discover presence, a clear view of life, free from ego smudges. It's like seeing the world in high definition. To really get there, you've got to do some soul searching. Presence blooms from seeds of humility and thankfulness. Kick off with short meditations, then build up like you're training for a marathon. Soon, you'll be able to tap into presence whenever you want. Think of your mind as a treasure chest in an infinite field, full of brilliant ideas just waiting to be found. Instead of trying to force the thoughts, just be open. Let the universe drop inspiration into your lap. Your old thinking habits are like well-worn paths, but it's time to blaze new trails. In the quiet moments, you're not just sitting in silence. You're in a library of wisdom, ready to be read. Turn down the volume of your inner chatter, and you'll hear the answers whispering to you. And don't forget, you're not a lone island. You're part of a vast network of minds, all sharing and shaping this world together. By stepping out of your mental comfort zone, you're not just changing your thoughts, you're reshaping your life. Chapter 4. Tune in to Positive Vibes Ever thought about how vibes and tunes can literally shape the world around us? Dr. Masaru Emoto, a cool scientist from Japan, showed us just that with water. He played different music and said different words to water, then froze it and took pictures. The water that got good vibes and sweet tunes turned into beautiful, perfect ice crystals. But the water that got bad vibes, it froze into messy, ugly shades. It's like a sneak peek at how the stuff around us can change the very core of nature and our minds. Our lives are like those water crystals shaped by the vibes we carry inside. If we're feeling insecure, it might puff up our egos, or if we feel not good enough, we might cling to others. These are the vibes bouncing around inside us, making up our personal soundtrack. But here's the good news. We can remix those vibes, just like different tunes change the water crystals. Changing our inner vibes can make our lives more about being responsible, loving without conditions, and finding peace. Start by figuring out your current vibe and how it's playing out in your life. Everyone's got their own vibe that makes them see the world in their own way. Realizing that most arguments come from these different vibes clashing, not from one right answer, can really open up your mind. 
Changing your inner vibes takes some looking inside and a bit of elbow grease. Doing things like saying positive stuff to yourself, meditating, writing down your thoughts, or talking it out can help you find and let go of beliefs that don't fit you anymore. This kind of soul work helps you wipe your mental windows clean so you can see life brighter. To keep your vibes high, hang out with things that lift you up, like good music, books, talks, and places. Just like those water crystals, your mind takes shape from the vibes you are around. Stay away from the downer stuff that can mess with your groove. Feed your head, heart, and soul with the good stuff. So, just like Dr. Emoto's water, our minds pick up on the vibes around us. By choosing what we let into our lives, we can steer our growth and find that clear, beautiful space in our lives, just like those perfect ice crystals. Vibes matter, so let's make them count. Chapter 5. Turning Triggers into Triumphs Think of inner work as a treasure hunt where love, peace, and joy are the ultimate prizes when life's little or big. Annoyances get under your skin. They're actually hints, like secret messages, pointing you to the old stories in your head that need a rewrite. What makes you tick? Or rather, ticked off? The blaring alarm clock. A surprise bill. These are your triggers. Don't just react. Stop and think about why they bug you so much. You've got a choice here. Slip back into autopilot mode or grab the steering wheel of your thoughts. Picture this. You're out with your family, and someone's behavior earned you some frowns from strangers. That hot flush of embarrassment. Freeze it. Breathe. Ask yourself, what's really bugging me here? Time to flip the script. Swap out, I'm so embarrassed, for this is just a moment in time. I'm good as I am, and nobody else's opinion can touch that. Feel the weight lift off your shoulders. Here's the game plan. First, spot your triggers. Next, dig up the belief that's setting them off. Then let go of that old tune and sing a new, empowering one. Triggers can't hold you down when you respond with awareness, not ego. Paint your world with strokes of self-love. Remember you give events their meaning. Choose calm over chaos. Keep tweaking your outlook until everything's rosy. Embrace change. It's your superpower. You can flip any script, rise above any trigger. Those old stories that boxed you in. They're history. You're the writer now, so start penning a fresh, freeing chapter in your life story. Final Summary Think of your mind as a garden. The thoughts and beliefs you plant, there can either sprout weeds or bloom into flowers of peace and awareness. Cultivating practices like mindfulness, choosing how you react, and deep self-reflection are the tools you need to prune away the unwanted and nurture a more serene, vibrant inner life. About the author, meet Matthew Micheletti, a spiritual landscaper, author, and the brains behind the conscious movement. He's on a mission to help you weed out the root of suffering and plant seeds of serenity. Mixing up psychology, philosophy, and spirituality, Micheletti's wisdom is your fertilizer for personal growth, helping you break through the hard soil of limitations and flourish. Ashley Cottrell is like a yoga gardener, tending to the soul's needs with her contributions to inner work yoga and as a co-founder of Spirit Woman. Drawing from the rich soil of Eastern philosophy and her own growth through life's thorny patches, she offers teachings and writings that are nourishing food for thought. We have reached the end of this audiobook summary. To read the full book, check out the link in the description. Your purchase will support us to create more summaries for you. This summary was created by Janky Mind, your reliable guide to learning and growth. Please like, comment, and share your insights on the book. Thank you for watching.